that is uh, on what all fans are waiting. We have the equipment, we have the weapons. We need <laughs> you, <laughs> trooper. We need you. Yeah. Service, guarantee citizenship. <laughs> Could you tell me something, how you came in touch with the movie business in general? Was it a um, planned career or was it rather by chance? So I, I was in military school. Uh, I went to an all guy military school. I grew up in a military family. And then I went to Florida State for a year and I was hanging out and I was working at a gym. And this guy said, why don't you go do this modeling competition with this guy? He's going over there. So I went over there and I won. And uh, I won a commercial talent. And then I manager heard about it and said, I want to meet you. So I went out to LA and he also represented at that time, he, he got his Magnificent Seven. Elijah Wood, um, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, me, uh, there was a whole bunch of us, but all of us still work to this day. And uh, uh, he later died, two years later of AIDS, he died, but um, I got into business that way. Mm. But I think it's because my parents were big into, uh, uh, you know, they're both teachers and, uh, uh, and they're in the arts, and so my dad was military, but he was also a teacher, and, and so he, uh, they got me into reading literature, and I read Starship Troopers when I was a kid, and um, I read Tarzan, the books, when I was a kid, and then I got to reread them again when I played the roles. It was uh, really fascinating for me. Mm -hmm. um, and could you tell me uh, how was the, the casting of uh, Starship Troopers? So how you came in touch with this topic was you... Mm, dedicated selected for this role of uh, Johnny Rico. So um, I, I the the audition the audition I had for Starship Troopers I got through my agent at the time uh, Harry Gold and Daryl Marshak and uh, uh, then they, they got me an audition for Starship Troopers I read and I met Paul I met Ed Newmeyer first I was in the waiting room and Ed Newmeyer came out of his office and he looked at me and he said come here. I went in his office and he had a musket from World War One. So I picked it up and I asked him and I did some drills with it. And he like looked at me like this. Mm -hmm. And then um, I went back out and sat and Paul Verhoeven came out of his office, dropped a soccer ball and kicked it at me. And I stopped and he goes, kick it. And I kicked it back to him. And he goes, no, I'll kick it. And I kicked it. And we went back and forth really hard at each other and just kicking it really hard. And then he goes, all right, come in and do the audition. And that's how I got the audition. And Paul, I think, just wanted me. He picked me out of everybody. I think he was being pushed on a lot of different people, and for some reason he got in his head that he wanted me, and uh, and I'm forever grateful for him. Okay. Luck of the draw for me, okay. I guess. But there was no other role in discussion for you. It was at the beginning just just oh, I, I just Johnny Rico. For, I think everybody was auditioning for Johnny Rico, and then they were seeing where they fit in in the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just the lucky one that got chosen for that. I mean, it could have been played by anybody. You see the helmet. Yeah. I, just, I was very lucky and fortunate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he had an image in mind that he was trying to mm -hmm. make Johnny Rico look, uh, you know, a, a certain way. And I think I fit that image. All American, could be, you know, German, could be, you know, a lot of things that I look like. So, you know, he, what he was trying to make me look like some utopian society that we were in where everybody looked uh, pretty, I guess. Yeah, uh, because I think to fight against the Paul uh, has planned to, to draw a uh, a bright society, a lucky society, a successful society. And then all hell breaks out. Yeah, all should be polished and yeah. Uh, bright. Yeah, he follows it. he's an, an amazing uh, visual uh, you know, genius when he comes to, to all his films, I think. So, yeah. What are you doing um, in, your, in your spare time to, to compense uh, the um, business stress level? Um, I, you know, I, 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 I do, I'm sober. I, I, uh, I haven't had a drink in over 30 years. And so I do a lot of meditating. I read, I go on walks with my dogs. Um, I watch movies, I work out, I try to stay healthy. I eat right, I try to eat very clean, uh, and I try not to put any chemicals in my body. I try, you know, sometimes we do other things, I'll have some sugar here and there, that's the chemical I do. Um, uh, but uh, I, I, other than that, you know, I'm, I'm, I try to maintain a, a, a healthier perspective, and I try to work on myself. As, as a man, as a father, I try to be a better person, as a husband, I try to be a better person. Um, 
I failed two marriages, so obviously I'm not perfect at that at all. Um, and uh, you know, and I've had to make my amends or try to make my amends, and even in that. But uh, you know, I try to be uh, a be better person every day. I try to wake up and try to do something better. Um, and uh, and acting is something that helps me be better because when I when I'm acting, I I fully embodying what I love more than anything, and then that helps me be a better a uh, better man, a better husband, a better father, a better brother, a better son. I think because I'm, I have a, 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 a huge sense of joy and fulfillment in, in that I'm, I'm doing exactly what I want. And, uh, and then and, and acting is very therapeutic. We get to express ourselves as different people and, and different aspects of ourselves. So we get to learn more about ourselves. We have to study other people. And doing that helps us, um, you know, it, it's just like therapy. It just helps me realize where I've been um, uh, not as authentic as I could be as a man, as a human, as who I want to be, and then doing it, I, I, I get to see different attributes of myself. And then we rehearse it over and over again so that we get better. The topic uh, of science fiction, so is it, is it um, a personal topic or is it um, from outside to you? Um, sci I've always been a huge sci-fi fan. I was a big Star Trek fan when I was a kid. I loved, I wanted to be Captain Kirk. I think everybody did. Um, and uh, I, I loved Star Wars. I wanted to be you know, Han Solo or Luke Skywalker. At different points, I wanted to be each one of them. Um, uh, but you, know, you, you see these things. Science fiction helps you know, us imagine. And anything that helps you, you know, strive to be a better human, to, to look into things and, and to To, to want to do better in life is, is an enhancer life and in and, 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 and science fiction they do that to try to find better ways for society to be and we want to improve on that we don't we want to be better as humans we want to be better as people better to each other better to other cultures better to different people with different likes you know so I think science fiction has always been that they've broken many barriers in that and given us the ability to uh, to maybe look at ourselves and, and see where we can do better in life so I think science fiction is amazing. It's one of my favorite subjects. What was the first topic of area science fiction with uh, which you came in touch? And uh, do you have maybe a, a role model from it? Uh, you know, my role model is my father. And he always will be. He's not an actor. He's very funny. My grandfather was very funny too. He was a vaudeville actor. He was a Marine. My dad's a Navy commander. But my dad is uh, uh, one of the most stand-up men I've ever met in my life. And if I could ever be, if I could ever attain being half the man he is, then I will have, I, I, could, be, I could be proud of myself then. Um, I haven't done that yet. He's, uh, he's, he's just an incredible person. But he helped introduce me to literature and reading and Tarzan. Tarzan was his favorite character. So when I got to play his hero, and I got to play my hero's hero, I think that was a huge... Um, you know, fulfillment in my, in my life. And, uh, you know, it's like, it, that's sci-fi fantasy. Tarzan would fall in that in a way. Um, it's still, you know, it's, it's pretend, but it's still uh, an incredible character. Uh, you know, Tarzan is Tarzan because of his intelligence more than his physical stamina or anything. I mean, his, his physical stamina becomes more because of his, his uh, intelligence. And we're using your brain, when we use our brain, when we think about things and we try to do better and we try to help and we try to work things out then we're doing better and my dad's that so my movies I have a lot of actors that I look up to and admire uh, there's a, the list goes on and on for it I mean there, there's so many do you have to go no no not yet okay um, so there's there's a lot I have uh, you know going back to John Wayne would be my favorite actor though John Wayne was my favorite actor What other roles um, did you like uh, to, to acting as uh, Johnny Rico? So besides Johnny Rico? Well, John, Johnny Rico is my all-time favorite. Um, being, and being general in, in Starship Cruise Extermination is a, is a thrill. Um, but I love being uh, uh, Tarzan. It would be one of them. I love being Sleepy Hollow with Johnny Depp and Christina Ricci and Tim Burton, of course. Um, I love being in the lead of Battle Angel, even though it was brief, because mm. I got to be in a scene with Christoph Waltz and Robert Rodriguez directed me. Um, I love being Johnny Cage, uh, and I just Gen General Rico. You played already also in Traitors of Mars. I did, yes, yeah. General Rico yeah. in that too. Yeah. And then I got demoted and promoted again. So, I, I, that's been Johnny Rico's uh, curse and, and blessing. He's gotten a lot of demotions and promotions and. 
and almost had to walk down Washout Lane. And but was you aware uh, that uh, Starship Troopers could develop in such an um, iconic uh, direction as you as you made it in 1996? When I made it, I would look over behind the monitor and I see Paul Verhoeven, Ed Newmeyer, John Davison, and Phil Tippett, the team behind Robocop, and I would go. Oh my God, this could be the biggest thing in the whole world. So yeah, I thought it would be. And when I saw it, I went, this is incredible. This is going to be the hugest thing. And when it, when it wasn't as big as it, it could have been, I was uh, a little disappointed. But the, the life it's had with people still coming to me and yelling quotes at the movie from me or to this day it still is uh, such a thrill. And that it's, it has such a life that it's still, you know, something that's being, games being made and people talking about it and showing up like this. It's still, it, it's... It has legs, and, and hopefully, you know, they, they've talked about doing another movie or they've talked about doing a series, um, and I almost made a series with John, uh, with Robert Rodriguez for Starship Troopers. Um, Sony had a change in the guard, and in the doing so, they, they dropped the ball on that one, and then he had to move on, so, but we almost did. Um, do you know about some plans? To continue, I I hope so. <laughs> I hope we do with the people that do such. So, a I, I mean, as a as a live uh, play, yeah. uh, movie, not not animated one. No, I would like I would love to do a live one. It would be fun yes. to come back as old, 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 old man Rico. To be the voice, yeah. Yeah, to be uh, the man yeah, again, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because uh, I think that is uh, on what all fans are waiting. So, well, let's make a, it so. A real acting movie. Yeah, so. maybe we could do it here in Germany. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. So, of course, we would be ready. So yeah, we yeah. have the uh, we have the equipment, we have the weapons. We need <laughs> you, <laughs> trooper. We need you. Yeah. Service, guarantee citizenship. <laughs> so you guys got to play the game. You guys got to come out there and play the game because I want I want to do that and maybe we'll get a. Uh, I will go all out and play one time. Yeah, maybe we will. I'll yell at you on 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 the on meet the us in the on the playground. Yeah, so in the game. Yeah, what is uh, your experience concerning gaming? So, uh, do you gaming all the time or? I, I, I just started gaming again. I game with my daughter every here and then. I used to game a lot when I was younger. In the past, I did. And, but and now I'm doing a break. I took a break, but now I'm playing Starship Troopers again. I play like. You know, four to six times a week. Oh, and I play it um, no, like the three or four much? times. A week. Yeah, I do. I'm having a blast. Yeah, I play as General J. Rico, and I go out and I kill bugs with a whole bunch of people, and I'm having so much fun. I'm hoping to get you troopers out there, you German division yeah. out there, <laughs> so we can kill some bugs together. So, right? I'm getting better. I'm killing a lot of bugs. Oh, oh. so now we have to be trained. Yeah. So we have to be trained. Yes. So. Thank you, Casper, for this uh, yeah. interview. Well, welcome to the Roughnecks. Welcome to Roughnecks. Rock! <laughs>